Hey guys, so this is Bailey. He is a poodle and I do him every four weeks. Right now I'm just grinding down his nails and just getting him ready for his bath. So right now what I'm doing is I'm putting warm water in the empty shampoo bottle because that's where I dilute my shampoo and I'm going to be using Quadruple's Oatmeal Tearless Shampoo. This stuff smells great and a little bit goes a long way so the bottle will last me for a very long time if I dilute it correctly and you could use this on their face everywhere and it's just really gentle but it still smells really really good. Just a reminder that to washing any dog, the trick is to get the shampoo and the product on the skin and not only just let it sit on the surface. So don't be scared to scrub, it doesn't hurt them. Actually, it feels good if anything. Getting their face scrubbed and washed is definitely everybody's favorite part and I would suggest you guys try this with your dogs at home if they let you because it's a great bonding experience. They highly enjoy it. Alright, so right now I'm just drying him with a warm white towel and I'm just trying to get all that water off of him. Poodle hair really sucks up a lot of water and retains a lot of it so the drying time is just long. But the more water I could get off of the towel, the shorter it will be and the happier he will be. Alright, so I started drying him. My dryer, my force dryer is on low because he is a small dog, so I don't really want to make him too uncomfortable. Um, you could tell that he's being very tolerant of this, but he's also been with me since he was a puppy, so I've trained him to my liking and I've showed him that the dryer is his friend. So he'll pretty much let me do it from start to finish and he'll let me do his ears and his head as you will see. But I just wanna let you guys know that this is a process that takes the longest in grooming. And so to help me out, I do put in a detangling spray and a leave-in conditioner that cuts down my drying time and I will leave the link below. Also, my main goal while drying Bailey is to make sure that his hair is not left curly, but instead dry straight, only because when I put my clippers through it, it'll just be a very smooth cut.
All right, I did change my nozzle here to a flat one only because it is a little bit more gentle and I am doing his head, so I just don't want to irritate him at all. All right, guys, it's party time. I'm just laying out my clippers and my shears and my combs, and I'm starting off with the same thing I pretty much always start off with. It's the sanitary area and the paws. For the sanitary area, I always use a 10 or a 15, and for the paws, I always use a 40, and I am using a Wall Barbera with a five and one blade. The paws is definitely one of my favorite parts to groom in a dog because it's really rewarding and it's just, it look, they look so beautiful when all the hair is out of the way and it's nice and clean. And your goal when you're grooming paws is to make sure that you're gentle but you're also getting in there and make sure that you don't leave any mats or dirt or debris in between their paw pads. Make sure that area is completely dry to avoid any yeast or fungal infections and yeah it's uh they look really nice when the dog is laying down after their groom and you could see their paws exposed and they're nice and clipped so just make sure that you don't leave any hair behind here i'm just finishing off his sanitary trim i am using a 15 blade but as you can tell, I'm not really digging in too hard. Uh, these are very sensitive areas, so you just want to avoid any irritation. All right, guys, so I'm going to start on his body and I'm using a number one comb attachment with a 40 blade underneath. And this is the part where you really find out if you did the prep work correctly because your comb attachment should be going through this dog's hair like butter. And it is, so yay. When I'm grooming a dog, I always start on the body and I just work my way down to the legs. And right now what I'm doing is I'm pretty much skimming the top of his legs to blend it in and that's just making me avoid a lot more scissor work. Alright guys, I'm going to start skimming his legs even more and what I'm doing with skimming his legs all the way down is just kind of creating the shape for myself and then I'm just going to perfect everything with shears and thinning shears. Alright, so the trick to doing this and not really messing up is to make sure that the dog's coat is fully brushed out and to also have a really sharp five in one blade underneath that comb attachment to make sure that it's cutting properly and it's just not tugging at the hair and you just really want to have a gentle touch so when i see a dog's leg and i'm skimming it i see that it has four sides so it has a left side a right side a back and a front so i go ahead and skim it accordingly but the front side i'm not gonna go too deep only because i want to leave the shape that it still has so you just have to be careful when skimming you don't go too deep that's why a light touch is crucial
way I always start on the paws because the paws are going to let me know how big the leg is gonna be. And I'm using my brand new Chris Christensen Curves. I will put the link below. These are my go-to, these are my everydays. These are the ones that hold me down and they're great for really big dogs. So I really love them. Um, a trick to making sure that your scissor work is on point is to make sure that you are brushing up on that fur because, or hair, sorry, because that's really gonna ensure that you're cutting evenly. scissoring I always keep a comb near me because I will keep on brushing up as many times as I need to until I feel like every hair is in place and I like the shape so because I groom Bailey every four weeks his hair doesn't really get out of control on me curly haired dogs they could easily get matted and this the hair just goes to a point of no return and you have to shave it off so if you do want to have a stylish haircut on your dog and you have a curly haired dog I suggest you getting them groomed every four to six weeks only because it'll just be easier on them easier on the groomer and you're most likely never gonna have to shave them down guys could see a great difference in a leg that is freshly scissored and another leg that hasn't been touched. For most of my curly dogs, I do use a hairspray called Thick and Thicker. It is by Chris Christensen. I will link that below. And I use this so it could just make it easier for me to scissor all the hairs while they're completely in place and it makes the dog's fur look thicker. So dogs definitely move throughout the grooming process as you could see and sometimes I end up denting a little bit of the hair and fur but I don't really worry about it because I always go in with my thinning shears or my chunkers and I blend and I erase any lines or dents that I have made. The 
front of their legs is definitely what's going to give them their flare. You could really go short on the sides and on the back, but if you leave that front of the leg and you shape it in a really nice round shape, it will give your dog some style. And so that's the reason why I don't really go in too much with my comb attachment and I don't really go too deep with my scissor work. All right, so here I'm pretty much done with the body. I'm just going in with my Chris Christensen chunkers to make sure that no hair was left behind and everything is looking even and crisp. Alright guys, so now I am starting with his face. This is an also very exciting part. And I'm taking my guy thinning shears and I'm just going ahead and thinning out the hair in between his eyes. curves back and I'm removing the hair in front of his eyes and just shaping the front of his head. So I'm done with the top of his head and I'm going to go ahead and start with his muzzle. I do not spray the hairspray directly on his muzzle because I'm very scared of it getting in his eyes or bothering him if he breathes it in. So what I do instead is I take my comb and I spray a little bit on that and then I go ahead and pass that comb through his muzzle. Uh, he sits really still for me on this because he just knows and again I've been grooming him since he was a puppy so if you do have a puppy start him out young and I just go ahead and I start creating that round shape and then I'll just keep on going and start perfecting it and tightening everything up. Alright guys, notice how I always have my comb near me, especially when I'm scissoring. Again, a comb is really going to let you know what you need to cut and what you don't. You just have to make sure that you know how to comb out a dog correctly while you're scissoring it and what shape you want to go with.
how cute he is. Like now you can see his eyes. He has beautiful brown eyes. All right, so my goal with his ears is to leave him looking pretty fluffy, but also give him a short and round look to go with his head. It's important when you're grooming a dog's head to also make sure that you're standing in back of them to make sure that everything is even on the back side and not only on the front side. Alright guys, we are on to the last step, which is his tail, and I pretty much brush it out, make sure all the little hairs are standing up, and then I go ahead and I sculpt it. Look how fancy he looks. He just really knows that I got to do my thing and he'll put himself in a very comfortable position and I just let him and we just roll with it. Alright guys, he is done. I gave him a little cute bow tie and I always reward him with his favorite treats because he deserves nothing less. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and share. I really appreciate you guys. And here is Mr. Bailey on his way home to show his parents. He's feeling good and he's looking good. Oh.